really this is a, a pretty accurate account of of the distribution of megalodon long before Budweiser had its distribution system down pat. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is. Now, these teeth were actually found in those particular areas that are listed. Uh, the one area that I'm really deficient on is megalodon teeth from Asia. We know that they were found there, and I do have some from Japan. But as far as other areas, uh, no, we, I've got one from Australia, some from New Caledonia, uh, one from the Marianas Trench. But that whole South Pacific region is... Well, here in the United States, on the adult side, we're dealing with some pretty big animals. Oh, yes. These, yes. Are, the, these are the up to 60 feet, perhaps, or at least 45 to 60 feet I would range. say at least 60 feet, yeah. And the, the biggest fossil uh, megalodon teeth come from South Carolina in the northern hemisphere, from northern Chile in the southern hemisphere. And they... They get teeth up to seven and a quarter, seven and three eighths inches, and I don't know of any megalodon tooth over seven and three eighths inches. And so we're moving into Mexico here, and then we get into South America, and again we're dealing uh, overall with some pretty big teeth. This is Peru representation. Is this the Sacaco yeah. Basin? That's that. I'm saying that right? Yeah, well, that's Ica there. That, that this one is Ica. Yeah, I have some Sakakwa teeth. Okay, well, I don't, I've already picked it up. And then uh, Chile is humongous. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts then on, and there's Argentina, while we're in this region, what uh, the distribution of Megalodon might have been along the coast of South America, if it was so rich in marine mammals, and, and if that was one of the preferences, did they pretty much hang out there, or do you think in that time, let's just go two to five million years, were they able to migrate through what, what is now the Isthmus of Panama? Well, I'm, and I'm sure they, they were able to do that. We find the modern white shark migrates tremendous distances, and I'm sure Megalodon did too. And would it be the younger or the older animals doing the migrating? or would it uh, That's a good question. I don't know if we can really answer that question. Uh, but as far as the teeth go, we don't see any regional characteristics in those. The, the teeth from all over the world uh, have, a, have the same sort of characteristics and the same amount of variation no matter where you find them. And uh, no explanation as to why we would get these, this huge size, a little more common in Chile, and then so much smaller in the two to three inch range once you get into uh, parts of Peru. Although, I mean, this certainly speaks for larger. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen teeth from Peru up to six inches, a little better than six inches, uh, from central Peru. So they do get big teeth there, but they don't get the big seven inch teeth there. So no thoughts on that? No, it's, uh, it's an interesting... Well, then we move over to a much larger region covering Africa, Asia, Australia. And again, look at some of the sizes on these. This is Australia is huge. New Caledonia is very large. The Marianas Trench, a, a, a quick story on that. Was that the Alvin submersible? Uh, you know, I don't know. I have exactly how that was collected, but it was collected many, many years ago. Uh, I got that tooth about 30 years ago. And Japan, of all places. I mean, this again shows you the global distribution this shark has had at different times when the sea conditions were appropriate for... Mm -hmm. in Italy, Germany. Belgium. 